So last time I mentioned two theorems from topology, the third which is more directly involves, which is more directly involves Lie groups. The theorems I stated were <coughs> is the following, if M is a compact orientable manifold, then H i M equals 0 if I greater than I greater than dimension of M. I think I forgot to mention this. Isomorphic to Z if I <coughs> equals dimension M and an orientation. determines a generator Z. Z is has two generators plus one or minus one and orientation de determines the generator <coughs> which we will take to, which we will take to be one when whenever we are dealing with a, we will fix the orientation on the manifold and we take to be one. <coughs> Okay, you need an orientation to fix the generator <coughs> and so the generator corresponds to 1 and z under this isomorphism as the first statement. The second theorem is stated the so following if m n are compact orientable manifolds, oriented manifolds which means I fix an orientation essentially means same as fixing a generator <coughs> then and f m to n or compact manifold same dimension dimension m say f m to n <coughs> a continuous map such that the induced map in the, the mth homology is multiplication by d by an integer z not equal to 0, then f is subjective. These are two statements <coughs> deduced and which I want to use for proving some theorems about compact Lie groups. I also stated another theorem which is due to Heinzhoff. which says that <coughs> the cohomology algebra the GBA compact the group then there exist odd degree elements alpha i in H two i plus one G 
I will work with real coefficients. There exists alpha in H2i plus 1. <coughs> oh, sorry, 2ni plus 1 in odd cohomology <coughs> such that such that the inclusion r of the direct sum i equal to <coughs> 1 2 l which automatically means that the alpha are linear independent. When I say it's, I write the direction, the inclusion in H star G R extends to an isomorphism of the exterior algebra. Let me call this E or V. Exterior star V, this is exterior algebra of V. To H star <coughs> See, V is a vector space and it is graded, graded by elements of degree 2 and i plus not degree elements, some L of them. I look at the direct sum of this. They are, I am assuming that they are linearly independent when I say when I write this is a direct sum and that is obviously subset of the cohomology of G R. <coughs> and then because of the f fact that the, the, this uh, exterior algebra of V has a universal property that is take any mapping of this into a anti competitive graded algebra of this vector space into that it extends to algebra isomorphism to an algebra isomorphism of H star G R. This is the so called universal property of the exterior algebra. So it says therefore the cohomology algebra of G is actually an exterior algebra over a vector space which is has only odd graded components. <coughs> odd graded is what makes uh, the exterior you know the exterior algebra if you want to make it into a graded algebra, graded anti competitive algebra, <coughs> you have to give this alpha is the great, the various products alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha r4 product of these generators will have grid n 2 n 1 plus 1 etc. Two, I mean alpha i1 etc. i r should be will have grid component is sum of sigma 2 n q n n i q plus 1 that will be the grid of the this is the grading of this element. So that is the statement. Not a difficult theorem to prove. I will give a quick indication of the proof. What one does is the following. Let i be the ideal of elements of positive degree in the cohomology. That is, I am omitting the zeroth greater component, the rest of it is oh yeah, G be a compact connected Then if you look at I by I square, this is the ideal elements of form x into y, x, y in I. Take this quotient space, call this V bar and then let V see I is, is, is the ideal is the ideal of all positive things. So it has a system of generators which are all homogeneous elements that is which belong to some H i every element belongs to some H i it has such a thing and therefore what happens I by I square therefore will decompose again into various graded components. I square is also stable under gradation. <coughs> so V will be that V be 
sigma r alpha i direct sum of r alpha i where g be such that v maps isomorphically on to v bar. <coughs> so, the alpha i so then I want to claim that this this alpha i will satisfy this property. And the point here is this this is uh, now so what the theorem follows from the purely algebraic theorem which says that let a b zero to some r be a graded anti commutative algebra over r with a zero equal to r <coughs> assume that A admits a greater homomorphism delta which goes from A tensor A to A tensor A. This is a graded anti commutative algebra in a natural fashion. You define A tensor B, A, yes, A in AP, B in BQ. You define A tensor B times C tensor D. So these are <coughs> C is in AR, D in OA, D in AS. Then the product of this two is going to be a c tensor b d where here you have to introduce a sign minus 1 power q r that is in other words you are pushing c across b and these these two have to anti commute. So, <coughs> I, this is the algebra operation here at this grid such that for every x a p or a q delta x q greater than 0 delta x equals x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x plus sigma psi i tensor eta i where degree of psi i eta i are both greater than 0. The, the graded computer algebra star gr has all these properties. Namely, here the taking delta h star gr satisfies these conditions with delta as the map induced by the diagonal by, by the multiplication g cross g to g. So, m is a, the group multiplication g cross g to g you take the <coughs> mapping the uh, which induced mapping in cohomology which goes to go in the opposite direction that is all these properties. So, the problem the theorem Hopf's theorem reduces to the purely algebraic theorem which is also proved by Hopf in fact <coughs> which says that 
if k is an algebra satisfying the above conditions and V is a vector subspace of sigma AI deducts from the I, I greater than 0 such that which maps such that V is equal to direction of <coughs> V intersection A i and yeah <coughs> maps isomorphically onto I by I square where I is direct sum of AI I greater than 0. Then A is isomorphic to the exchange algebra of this P. All the conditions are put down on A are satisfied by the Comorge algebra of the compactly group and so it will follow from this theorem. And this theorem is quite easy to prove. Firstly, <coughs> if you take in a, the point is that very quickly the proof is by induction on the number L. Okay. <coughs> Notice of course that H star the algebra A let me make the additional assumption that A is it is not really necessary. A is a finite dimensional algebra that can make it. <coughs> Such that the <coughs> finite dimension is not necessary, but from the proof you can easily see that you can get rid of that condition. The pr proof is by induction. So, that is why uh, it is by induction. So, because i by i square is finite dimensional, we prove by induction on L which is the dimension of what I call V. So, pick an element x in V of smallest degree. Then, if you look at x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x, sorry, if you look at delta of x, it becomes x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x. The higher degree terms disappear because there have to be total degree, let me, if psi i tensor eta i, both these are degree, <coughs> this x is the smallest degree. So, this is uh, both these will have to be a degree greater than that of x, <coughs> which is impossible because they, add, so they should add up to the degree of x because delta is degree preserving. So, plus all this will be here, but this is 0 since degree psi i eta i are both greater than 0 have to be greater than x strictly greater than or equal to x and degree psi i plus eta i degree eta i equals degree of x because of the delta x has to this disappears therefore delta x equal to x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x. And then if you claim degree x is odd if if not If not, I want to say that x power n is not 0 for any n. If so, degree is even, this is going to be true. Why? Because 
delta of x power n, look at delta x power n, x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x power n. And this is going to give you binomial expansion will tell you this is sigma n r x power r tensor x power n minus r. The moment uh, <coughs> if the degree x is not odd, look at x square for instance, it will become x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x plus <coughs> twice x tensor x. If <coughs> x is not 0 and it is not a odd degree, x tensor x will also be, will also be non 0. <coughs> so, which <coughs> and inductively you prove therefore that delta x power n is, is never 0, which means x power n is never 0, okay. But our algebra is finite dimensional. So, x power n has to be 0 for some n. So, this proves that degree of x is odd. Once the degree is odd, what you do is the following. You look at the ideal generated by i. So, two sided ideal, one sided ideal does not matter because the multiplication is anti commutative Look at a by x i, call this a 1. This is going to be generated by one element less than the generator I started out with. So, induction and notice that delta of x i falls into a tensor x i plus x i tensor a. So, you find that you delta will map this into a by x i tensor a by x i. I mean you get a natural map of the original, original delta factors through to a map of this into this. So, this becomes again a Hopf algebra which is generated by less number of elements by induction hypothesis it's an exceed algebra. So, you find that a by x i is isomorphic to the exceed algebra star v. And on the other hand you look at the algebra generated by just x alone star v prime. On the other hand the algebra r plus r x is nothing but the exceed algebra or, or of a one dimensional vector space. So, this now this is you have this a by you have this a by x i which I know is isomorphic to the algebra of v prime some for some vector space v prime and you have natural map a this is an anti commutative graded algebra and you take a, a lift of v prime gets some v prime can be mapped into isomorphically on the subspace here v 0 prime <coughs> contained in v. So, you have a mapping of v prime to this and therefore, by the universal property of exterior v prime you have a map of exterior v prime t. So, a map of both exterior v prime to a and you also have a mapping of exterior of R x one dimensional vector space to A and therefore from the tensor product to A get a natural map, which is an isomorphism because of dimension considerations you like whatever. <coughs> so that proves that the cohomology algebra of G is a exceed algebra over a vector space graded by only odd degree, odd degrees. Now on corollary is the following. <coughs> if V sorry yeah, if the vector space B is a direct sum of vector spaces R E i, I call it E i alpha i, I equal to 1 to L, then dimension of G equals sum of 2 n i plus 1, <coughs> 2 n i there i equal to 1 to L and H dimension G of G R is
the exterior algebra has a top dimensional element beyond which all the exterior powers are 0 and the top dimensional element looks like this. So, the top dimensional element a uh, top degree element of the exterior algebra is of precisely degree sigma 2 n i plus 1 <coughs> and this is a generator of that cohomology. So, we know that this is isomorphic to R. So, its generator is this element. <coughs> now, yeah, no, notice that H star, sorry, H uh, star GR is 0 if uh, HI i greater than equal to n. On the other hand, the exterior algebra, exterior V star, the qth degree component is 0 if q greater than equal to sigma 2ni plus 1. Therefore, it follows that <coughs> the So, the top degree element of H star G R is nothing but is of the form some lambda times alpha on H here alpha L for some lambda in R. Anyway, <coughs> so so much about the cohomology. Well, how am I going to use it? I am going to use the other theorem about the degree of the map. What I will now show, next step, is the following. Let R be any integer and then the map x going to x power R of G to G has a degree. Which way is it? Yeah, R power L, where L is the dimension of V as here. It's an exterior algebra over V, and if that has dimension L, I want to claim that this has degree R power L. <coughs> and observe that if corollary the map x to x power r is on to if r why did you look at the mapping x to x power r it is degree r power l which is greater than 0 and if the mapping is the degree if mapping between a two compact manifolds is degree not equal to 0 then it is subjective that is the second theorem I stated. So, this tells you that in a compactly group compact G compact connected I mean this is a blanket assumption unless I state otherwise G will be a compact connected Lie group. So, this mapping is subjective that is you can in other words in the group G you can extract earth roots for any R whatever you whatever R you take then extract earth roots in the G which is obvious in the case of the circle and therefore also in the case of the torus. Take any element of the circle you know you can extract its earth root and you can product of circles is obvious. Now, I am saying it is true for any compact Lie group. <coughs> how, is, how does the proof go? I just have to look at what, what this map does to a generator. 
So, let us look at generators alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha R generators a basis of V where H star G is isomorphic to X real algebra of V. Now, the generator for the highest homology we know is of this kind. It's a generator. Now, what does <coughs> let's take the case R equal to two. The general case is very similar. Right? What does it do? When you take R equal to two, you are looking at the mapping G <coughs> to G, which is x going to x square, which can be thought of as the mapping of G to G cross G, the diagonal mapping, and here the multiplication. This is what the mapping x going to x square is like. And so under this map what happens? You look at any element, any of these generators alpha i, it will go into, under this map it will go into alpha i tensor 1 plus 1 tensor alpha i plus something more. Okay. And these are the <coughs> And when you let write psi i psi, psi i j tensor eta i j. And then you go here, this is nothing but under so g to g cross g under the diagonal map and this sorry, which, sorry, I'm not saying it right. The mapping is in cohomology. So so this is what the mapping x square is. Now I want to see what happens to this. G and under the multiplication here m star, this is where alpha i goes into alpha i tensor 1 plus 1 tensor alpha i plus something more. Okay. <coughs> and then when I g cross g, this diagonal map is indu induces the multiplication cohomology. So, this will go into, when I take the this, this map, it will go into alpha i tensor 1 plus 1 tensor alpha i, it will go into 2 alpha i plus something here. So, the various elements go into let me write alpha 1 goes into 2 alpha 1 plus something more, alpha 2 goes into 2 alpha 2 and so on. Now, arrange the alpha i's in increasing degrees. Then, if you look at 2 alpha 1 lowest degree it will simply will go into 2 alpha 1 nothing more because here it becomes simply alpha i tensor 1 no more terms. When you take 2 alpha this is the second one it goes into alpha 2 plus here you might get something involving only alpha 1. So, something involving alpha 1 and similarly if you go to alpha r it will go into 2 alpha r plus something involving alpha 1 etc alpha r minus 1. When I take the product alpha 1 etc alpha r they will go into 2 alpha 1 to 2 alpha 2 etc here, but when I the additional terms what happens is this some one of the alpha will get repeated and alpha i times alpha i is 0. So, all those things disappear. So, what happens is alpha 1 etc alpha r goes into 2 power l this there are l elements 2 power l alpha 1. This is generator. So, the degree is 2 power n. And a similar argument you know if you want to cube you take the product 3 times g to g cross g cross g and then to multiplication same thing and then it uh, everywhere instead of 2 alpha 1 you will get 3 alpha 1. In general if you take raising to the power r you will get r alpha 1, r alpha 2 etcetera. So, <coughs> so, that shows the mapping is of degree <coughs> is positive. So, you can extract r root for any r. Now, from this we will deduce the first important corollary so which is the and also we call the theorem, but it is corollary of this which says the following G compact 
connected the group suppose T is any torus in G that same thing as being a connected compact abelian subgroup and X in G commutes with T then there exists a torus yes containing both x and t okay fix a torus suppose there is an element x which comes to the torus there is a bigger torus which contains both is what this says in particular before i proceed i'll deduce corollary to this one is that any element is contained in a maximal torus any element is contained in a torus and therefore will be contained in a maximal torus if you take increasing families of uh, tori their union closure will be a torus so there is always maximal elements are available <coughs> any element is contained in maximal torus so one of the consequences so through every point there passes a circle if you like not circle there passes a torus that's all you can say and yeah and the second corollary is a maximal torus is a maximal abelian subgroup The maximal torus is a maximal abelian subgroup of G. Maximal torus in G is a maximal abelian subgroup of G. The maximal torus is a maximal connected abelian subgroup, but I want to say it is actually even maximal abelian, sorry, okay, it is a why is this because you take a <coughs> torus suppose there is an element commuting with it then that element together with the torus is contained in a bigger torus okay so I take a maximal torus and I take a point which commutes with it then automatically the two together are in the torus being maximal that has to be that torus so maximal torus is maximal ability so two consequences how do I prove the statement the proof goes like this <coughs> First, we need to know the following fact, which is essentially a theorem due to Kronecker. <coughs> number theory, it's a number theory theorem, it says the following if T is any torus. then T contains an element such that the cyclic group generated by th <coughs> theta is dense in T. In fact, the theorem of Kronecker says the following if uh, alpha equals 1 alpha n minus 1 is an element in Rn such that they are linearly independent these are such that the alpha i
are linearly independent over q. Then image alpha in Rn by Zn generates a dense subgroup. That is how you get elements in a torus which generate because the cyclic group generated by that is dense in the whole. For example, if you look at two elements, one alpha in R2, and look at the cyclic group, look at the image, and the, from this you are mapping into R2 by Z2. If one and alpha are going to be linear independent over Q, then you know M plus N alpha is dense in the <coughs> entire rail line. From that you can see that the image of this generates a cyclic group which is dense in R2 by Z2. It's a two-dimensional torus in which you have a cyclic group generating. So it's a, it's a more general version in n dimensions. So that's a theorem essentially due to Kronecker. We'll make use of that theorem now. How will I use it? So I start with the element X in G and a torus T which is given to us. I pick a element now look at the group generated by X and T. What we would like to prove that this is contained in a bigger torus. Let us call this group gamma and let us take the closure of gamma. The closure of gamma denoted gamma bar is a compact abelian Lie group. Let us denote by gamma bar 0, the identity connected component. Gamma bar is a compact Lie group, so it is a manifold. It is only, since it is compact, it is only finitely many connected components. And if I call the gamma naught bar the connected component containing 1, the identity element containing 1, then a subgroup and <coughs> gamma by gamma gamma bar by gamma bar naught is finite. It is a compact group and discrete therefore finite. <coughs> the quotient is a finite group. So it follows that There exists R such that R an integer positive non negative integer such that X power R this X in G is actually in gamma naught. So of order. In other words, this, this implies expo this has finite order. So any element of gamma bar, if you raise it to the rth power, will fall into gamma naught. So in particular, x power r will fall into gamma naught. <coughs> okay, now let's look at x theta. Pick a generator theta of gamma bar naught such that generate means the cyclic group generated by that is dense pick such that theta power also r is also generated.
such a thing exists as you can see from the Kronecker theorem. <coughs> so let us now look at x, yeah. Now x power r is an element in gamma naught bar which is a torus where I know I can extract any rth root. So x power r is equal to y power r with y in gamma 0 bar. Now look at theta y inverse or rather x power r equal to y power r. Now I can replace see if uh, <coughs> x by x y inverse then its rth power is 1. If x and y is already in the torus if x and the torus are to be contained in a bigger torus same would happen for x, x y inverse sorry same would happen for x y inverse but the point about x y inverse is x y inverse power r equal to 1. That is how y was chosen. I took the rth power of x and that is also the rth power of y. So x power and their commute x power r into y power minus r equal to 1. So x y inverse power r is equal to 1. So <coughs> replace x by x by inverse. So can therefore in other words can assume that x is a finite order. R. Now I then pick look at this generator theta says that theta power r is also a generator. Let us look at the element theta power r. Let us look at the element theta x. What is the group generated by? Theta x is same as group generated by theta. Am I saying it right? Group generated by theta x yeah if I look at the group generated by theta x is group generated by theta and x. Why? Because look at theta x power r <coughs> that becomes theta power r which generates the torus and then so the group generated by theta x contains our torus but theta is already in the torus. So the group generated by theta x contains theta and the torus. So group generated by theta and x is same as the group generated by theta x. Okay. <coughs> now, so if I am able to prove that there is a torus through theta x, then I am done. If there is a torus containing theta x, I am done. To show that theta x is in a torus, that is that's what I have to prove. In other words, in the statement of the theorem I could have taken the torus to be the trivial torus. Okay, now what do I do? <coughs> what I do is the following. So pick element x in G, define sequence x i inductively as follows. x i power i equals x i plus 1 power i equals x i. <coughs> Other words, I have defined x i, then I take x i plus 1 to be an ith root of x i which exists by the theorem we proved. We raise into the power r is a subjective map. Assume inductively as follows x i plus 1 power i is x i. 
such a sequence exists because I can extract the throughout all the time and take the group generated by xi plus 1 xi maybe I should write xi plus 1 power i plus 1 then observe that let us call this group theta, theta closure it is a compact Lie group. I, have, I mean I have been using the Cartan's theorem that the close, close subgroup of a Lie group is a Lie group constantly. So I know that this is a compact Lie group and therefore <coughs> theta naught be the identity connected component, connected component of the identity. Then I know that theta by theta naught is finite of order r, some r. Now the point is that look at the, the group generated by xi i greater than or equal to any q is the same as is the group generated by is the same as the group generated by all the xi. Why? Because any xi is a power of next one. So if I look at xi minus 1 that is contained in the group generated by xi because it is the i plus by definition it is the ith power xi minus 1 is the ith power xi minus 2 is the i minus 1 power of that and so on. So once you capture xi i greater than q you capture everything. So the group generated by theta naught is <coughs> this. On the other hand notice that any xi is a qth power for any q. Because you look at xq, xq is the xq minus 1 is the qth power of something and any anything uh, coming up uh, below that is going to be a qth power because this is already a qth power. If the point is when you raise xn to n factorial you will end up in x and therefore you find it in, in other words this group generated by this is a divisible group uh, and therefore in, in the this it is a divisible group so the quotient of any divisible group cannot be finite unless it is trivial implies theta is divisible implies notice that <coughs> notice that uh, th yeah sorry I should say this is theta closure but this is same as theta by theta naught intersection theta because a dense subgroup this uh, theta already maps subjectively onto this but theta is a divisible group implies the theta theta by theta bar intersection theta naught is a being finite is trivial that shows the theta naught bar is same as theta naught I mean the theta bar is same as theta bar naught the two things are same in other words theta bar is connected therefore it is a torus. So through every point there is a torus is what we prove but that already says I mean the argument shows that actually you can prove something stronger namely given a torus and an element the two together are contained in a torus an element commuting with it and also that the torus maximal torus is maximal abelian.
and there is another interesting consequence of this it is the following. Further corollary let n t let t be a maximal torus and n t its normalizer in G. This means n t is the set of G in G such that G T G inverse Christie that is what normal other of T is. Then the identity connectivity N T is compact and T is its identity connected component is its uh, connect connected component of the identity in N T. So, T is a maximal torus I look at the normal other of T and look at its identity component of N T that turns out to be T and hence the group W which is the normal other of T modulo T is finite and this group is called the wild group of G with respect to T named after Hermann Weil. Why is this true? So we have proved that the maximal torus is maximal labelian. Now you have a natural mapping from N T into the automorphism group. Automorphism group T, all automorphisms of the torus T into itself, all analytic group automorphisms of T into itself. Sorry? In this one, what did you conclude in the end? This implies this is trivial. So, what was the aim? Theta, see, theta bar by theta bar, sorry, theta by theta intersection, theta bar intersection theta not is trivial. Therefore, theta bar by theta bar not is trivial. The two things are the same. Huh? This is dense. The point is theta is dense in theta bar. So the image is dense and this is a finite group in which the image is dense. Okay, therefore it is on two. So the these two are the same and that is so and I know that this being a divisible group this is trivial and so theta bar by theta not is trivial not bar is trivial, theta bar equals theta not bar, theta bar is connected therefore it is abelian compact and therefore it is a torus, theta bar is the torus which contains my element x which I started off with. Now let me get back to this, so you have a natural map of the normalizer of torus into the automorphism group namely you take sigma in nt and then Inner automorphism by sigma, inner conjugation by sigma, the mapping of t to t is evidently an element in automorphisms of t. The inverse is also there, so it is an automorphism of t. Now, what are the automorphisms of t? t is a circle group, product with itself some L copies. Okay. 
what are the automorphisms? What are the endomorphisms? So if you take a mapping, you this is you are taking a mapping of this into S1 cross S1 cross S1. If you take an endomorphism of these groups, continuous endomorphism of, of this group into itself, it is going to be given by take any one factor Si, it will go into the product. So, you will get in each element x, you will get element Xij here as j varies. In other words, an, an endomorphism a mapping a homomorphism of S1 to S1 is simply given by raising by an integer. So, what you find is that the element sigma determines a matrix of integers where L is the dimension of the torus, the real factors. So, it is an L cross L matrix, any endomorphism is L cross L matrix of integers. And if we want it to be an automorphism, it has been invertible matrix obviously. So, you find that this is hot T is nothing but G L L G. A little bit of an argument will show you that this mapping from N T to G L L Z is actually continuous when you equip this with the discrete topology. That is not difficult to see. You equip the with the discrete topology, this mapping is <coughs> continuous. So, you have a continuous mapping from this and, and since t is maximal abelian, it factors through n t by t. This mapping factors through n t by t. It's an, it factors through to an injective map of n t by t in this. This is injective because what is the kernel? The kernel this map is those elements which go to trivial element which means those which commute with t and that is t. So, n t by t maps injectively into this. This is a, this is a discrete space this, and this is a continuous map. So, this n t by t on the hand is compact because n t is closed that is obvious look at the definition n t is closed t is therefore, n t is compact. So, n t by t is compact and goes injectively into discrete group. So, n t by t must be finite. So, the group w is finite it is called the wild group it is a finite group n t by t is finite. So, all these are corollaries of that one statement that given an element x and a torus commuting with it the two together are in a torus. So, we conclude that every element is in a torus and therefore, the maximal torus and n t by t <coughs> Right. Okay. Now, n t by t is finite. That all those things are conclusions or corollaries of a single theorem. Now, next, I want to say the following. Here again, I have to appeal to the theorem in topology. Well, it is differential geometry topology if you like theorem M compact oriented M n compact oriented manifolds of same dimension. Maybe I will make a definition first. A point compact connected, a point and sorry and F M to N a continuous map. Let me t assume a differentiable map. So, uh, on analytic manifold, you can obviously talk of diff differential functions, etc., differential maps, and so on. All that you want to, instead of saying that the various composites are analytic, just say composites are 
differentiable. Say differentiable C1 will do C1 map. A point P in M in N is evenly covered by F if there exists a neighborhood U of <coughs> actually at this for this definition I do not need a differential map even a continuous map will do. There is a neighborhood U of uh, P in N such that F inverse U is a disjoint union of open sets V i such that let me say there exists a U which is a homeomorphic to a disk such that F inverse U is a disjoint union of open sets V i such that F restricted to V i is a mapping of V i to U is a homeomorphism. Then I call it evenly covered. <coughs> Notice that each V i is the is a neighborhood of a point which is inverse image of P. So uh, F inverse P is a collection P i 1 less than root i less than root r with P i in In fact, every point of U is covered by exactly the same number of points. Every point in U is the same number of points in the union of VI, the disjoint union of VI. Then I call the thing evenly covered. Now, Now we have uh, we are assuming that the manifolds M and N are oriented, which means in every U you will have an orientation. That means in if you look at U open set and take any point P in U, you get an element. Omega p in exterior m of uh, <coughs> the tangent space at p that is the definition of you know, definition of orientation tells you that in the exterior p power there is an element omega p which varies smooth. Oh, sorry. Yeah, U is an open subset of N. So that, that's of N. We have a omega p, which is omega p varying smoothly. So that to compact connected, you need oriented smooth manifolds. For, for, for this definition, omega p varying smoothly with p, get an element of omega p like that. And similarly, in each v i get, uh, let us call it alpha omega 
zeta pi i pi is the point lying over in each in each vi you get zeta pi in exterior rem t pi okay. <coughs> this is it. in fact in fact you get uh, here in fact you find uh, omega q for every q in uh, u you get an elemental exterior rem t q of and similarly here for every q i you get an element zeta q q i in v i which is inverse image you get an element zeta q i in exterior rem T Q of. Now, under the map F, you can pull back this differential P form at the nth exterior power. From when you have a map F, you have a map D F from the tangent space to the tangent space, and therefore in the reverse direction of the duals, and therefore from the exterior powers. So you find that uh, D, I call the map D F star of uh, omega p o, omega q if you like equals some <coughs> lambda q i of zeta q i lambda a smooth function if it is a c1 map smooth function not equal to 0 <coughs> for every q i smooth function oh, sorry for every i on v i for 1 less than i less than to r ok. <coughs> so, the the local degree at q at, at, at p i is by definition plus minus 1 according as lambda q i greater than or less than 0. <coughs> lambda q as q as lambda q i as q i varies is a function on v i which is homeomorphic to a disk. So, it is Huh? Tangent space to M at PI. Thanks. So, and therefore, they are also just. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry? No, this is this is an all right. Here, V i T P i M. No, huh? okay. It's okay, no? Yeah. So lambda q i will help you everywhere positive or everywhere negative. The local degree at P i is plus or minus one according to it's positive or it's negative. So this is the It's lambda. Oh, sorry, I should, I should say sorry. Uh, D F star omega q is lambda q i zeta q i. I can I take it to be plus one or minus one. Then the theorem is degree of all that I want is f to evenly cover one point and have this extra property. I mean, the degree of f in that case equals sigma over i degree at p i. So, you see you can compute from some local data the degree of the map of the big manifold and other provided you have a 
point which is evenly covered. This is the standard theorem in topology <coughs> which I cannot go into the proof of. Okay. Now what I will do is to <coughs> apply this theorem to show you that the number you know the we had the it's it was an exceed algebra over some L dimensional vector space. That L is the same as the dimension of a maximal torus, which in particular will prove that the dimension of a maximal torus is independent of the torus. Any two maximal tori have the same dimension. Actually, we will show more. Any two maximal tori are actually going to be conjugates. We will prove that later. But right now, the point is that this degree can be computed like this. How do I do that? So, the proof of that. I am going to use this theorem to show that theorem H star G R is an exterior algebra. On a odd graded vector space of dimension L equal to dimension <coughs> of maximal torus. The idea is this fix a maximal torus. And let us look at the mapping G to G given by x going to x square. We know that this map has degree equal to 2 power L from topological considerations. So, we are looking at the Kohmer algebra, we prove this statement. So, we just have to prove that L is also the dimension of the maximal torus. degree 2 power L where L equal to dimension V. Now look at look at this map and I will look at an element theta in G which generates the maximal torus. Generates means the cyclic group generated by that is dense in the maximal torus. So now I want to look at this is the map f for me what is f inverse theta this is going to be an element x such that x square equals theta which means x will commute with theta but theta generates the torus so x will commute the torus so x will belong to the torus so the only element only elements which are in the inverse image of f, f, f inverse theta is x square equal to theta. Any element in f inverse theta is in the torus, is in fact a generator of the torus. Because theta is a generator, x is also a generator, x square is theta, x square generates, therefore x generates. X is in the torus already. So, how many in the torus you know how many points are there in the inverse image of any point? There are exactly two power points where L is the dimension of the torus. And a little bit more of work, and then you find that near up, if you take a small assumption in a good neighborhood of theta, its inverse image evenly covers that open set. It requires a little bit of work, but I do not want to go into details of that. Huh? Yeah, you have to. There is some proof you have to give that. I mean, you, the way you prove it is to look at the inverse image and look at uh, the mapping x x per r and calculate its differential. You find it's an isomorphism. The, once you know it's an isomorphism by the inverse function theorem, you know it's local homeomorphism, and you have to show that uh, everything. There, uh, if you take 
the suitable open neighborhood of each of these uh, thetas and translate them, you will get all the neighborhoods you want. That is requires a little bit of work. And therefore, you find it is evenly covered and it is also easy to see that the mapping x to x square preserves the orientation that the everywhere the local degree is 1. So, you add up you get 2 parallel the local degree. There are 2 parallel distinct points you get 2 parallel the local degree. So, 2 parallel is the sum of the local degrees therefore, it must be equal to the degree. But the 2 parallel L here is the dimension of the torus because they are exactly 2 parallel points over in the inverse image of a single theta. F inverse theta consists of 2 parallel points. At each of those points the mapping is the local degree is 1 and therefore, add up you get 2 parallel. On the other hand, it is L is also a dimension of the vector space V. So, the 2 are equal. Okay. Well, this is uh, I'm, I don't, I, I don't want to go into this because later on I am actually going to prove that uh, all tori are maximal conjugate or, or, uh, conjugate to each other all maximal tori. So, I do not want to go into details to prove, but it is a good exercise to work out the proof. <coughs> okay, so, that does the job for us. We have come shown that the in fact, I do not know see the this is a, actually you can formulate this whole thing in a purely Lie algebra context. And then if you do it in the Lie algebra and in terms of cohomology of the Lie algebra, uh, I do not think there is a proof without using topology for the fact that dimension of the maximal torus is equal to the, the vector space in the, for the cohomology of the Lie algebra without recourse to topology. It, it, it turns out I mean this is something which is an aside if you like. The cohomology of, you can talk of the cohomology of Lie algebra which is same thing as the cohomology of the compact Lie group. And for the, the theorem tells you it is the same as the cohomology of that. therefore, if you take a maximal torus in the Lie algebra or it is a con, Lie algebra of a compact group you take a maximal abelian subalgebra of that and uh, its dimension is the same as the the generator generating vector space of the cohomology of the Lie algebra. That statement probably does not have a purely algebraic proof. At least in the at the time I learned these things, there was no <laughs> there is no purely algebraic proof for that. You, if you use topology, you find that the rank of that vector space is same as the dimension of the torus, and therefore in Lie algebra cohomology, the same thing must be true. The dimension of the maximal abelian subalgebra must be the same as the dimension of the cohomology of the Lie algebra. And cohomology of, to talk of cohomology of Lie algebra, you do not need the group at all, Lie group at all. It is a purely algebraic notion cohomology of Lie algebra. We will come to that. I will probably say something about that at some point, but not uh, in any great length. Okay. I th the next time, I have I will prove the fact that all maximal tori conjugates. This is again using topology. What we will do is uh, look at the mapping. See G cross T to G. Sorry? These exponents 2 di plus 1 hmm. are uh, invariants of the wild group on the on the Lie algebra of the torus are these are the invariants. Yeah, so there must be no the point is that uh, you do not want to use <coughs> any topology, which means you do not even want to use the Lie group in some sense. Okay. <coughs> no, but the, of course the wild group can be defined without uh, referring to the Lie algebra, but I do not think it uh, still the a proof is not available without use, the use of topology at least it was not available in the 70s <laughs> okay uh, maybe since then somebody has proved it i don't know okay now so look at the mapping g cross t to g namely g comma t goes into g t g inverse this mapping obviously factors through g by t cross t because if you modify g by g s you get g s t s inverse g inverse but s and t commute. So, it factors through g by t cross t to g. g by t has a natural structure for manifold. In, in general if I have a compact Lie group and h is a closed subgroup g by h carries natural structure of a analytic manifold. And then here is and what is the dimension? It will be of dimension exactly equal to dimension g minus dimension t and this is dimension t. So, the particle is the same dimension as the dimension of g. 
So you have a mapping of uh, compact manifolds of same dimension and then to if you prove it is subjective that means every element has a conjugate in the torus. Now if you take 2 tori T1 T2 take a generator of T1 then that generator is a conjugate in T2 use that conjugation then it will take T1 to into T2. So point is to prove that this mapping <coughs> has positive degree. Suppose you prove I mean both these are orientable manifolds and if we fix orientations and then you prove that the mapping is non-zero degree then the mapping will be subjective and it will follow the raw maximal tori or conjugates. So repeatedly it is the things to do with the degree of the map that one, one uses here in from topology. <coughs> so that is what we will prove next time but I would not say more today. Thank you.